Hello, and welcome to Stefudal. I am, fruitfully, Steph, and I'm holding this strawberry because this video is part of a collab with a cornucopia of fruit-themed girls, and I chose strawberry, obviously. After this video, please make sure to check out the videos for the other seven fruity cuties in this collab. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy this strawberry. For this custom, I'll be using Emmy Vanda from Rainbow High. She's been displayed on my shelf for a while now, but I think it's time to give her a new look. I used my hairdryer to heat up the head and make it squishy and easier to remove. While I'm at it, I also remove her eyes by pushing them out from the inside with a chopstick. It's equal parts disconcerting and satisfying. Since her hair is pretty and long, I carefully separate the colors and cut them off separately. Then the bundles get tucked away with the rest of my doll hair for use in future customs. I use a sharpie to mark out where I want to make a head cap and heat the head up with my hairdryer again so that my craft knife can slice through it like butter. There's still a mess of hair in there, so I go about removing the remaining hair from the head and the head cap with my tweezers. I remove the factory paint using pure acetone. Unfortunately, the paint left a stain where her eyebrows used to be, but I'll just draw her new ones in the same place to cover it up. I cut out the extra vinyl from the eye sockets off camera. I started with the eyes this time. I drew these irises on Bristol board with a mix of alcohol markers, watercolor pencils, and paint pens. I put a little UV resin into my hemisphere mold and place the irises on top. Then I cure them under my UV lamp. I mix up some white UV resin, fill in the rest of the mold, and cure them again. I'm definitely still figuring out how to make resin eyes well, but I think these turned out pretty okay. After that, I sprayed the face with two layers of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat, waiting 30 minutes in between each layer, and got to work on the face up. I started by sketching out her lash line with a watercolor pencil a few shades darker than her skin tone. I also used chalk pastels to add blushing and dimension to her face. I was thinking a lot about Fruits Magazine during this custom. Uh, Fruits was a magazine that ran from 1997 to 2017 and was founded by photographer Shoichi Aoki. And it was full of photos of Tokyo street fashion, especially in Harajuku. While it's no longer in production, Aoki maintains an Instagram account for it and posts images from the archives. I'll link it, as well as his personal and street magazine accounts in the description below. It's a lot of fun to look through. I highly recommend it.
I tried to paint in her teeth, but I just could not get it to look right. So I painted back over it in the end. I think that happened with my previous Rainbow High doll too. I've only really been able to make teeth work with smiling Barbie head molds that have teeth already molded in there. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> one of these days, maybe I'll make it work. After adding a little shimmer, her face up is done. Now I can reattach the head. I decided to add some gloss varnish to her lips this time. And then the fall slashes. <laughs> I thought it would be easier to add them to a doll with inset eyes, and they were not still very difficult. I did most of it off camera because it was so fiddly like every it just it kept they kept moving they kept coming off and it was just oh boy but that's okay they got there in the end and then I added some extra tacky glue for stability. I painted over any visible glue with black acrylic paint. I was going to trim them but I actually liked the length so I left them as is. I inserted the eyes and stuck them in place with white blue tack. Then I sewed the head cap back on. I reinforced the stitching with tacky glue off camera before painting her scalp green. While that dries, let's work on a couple of accessories. I decided to use these Georgia Bloom sneakers. I whittle off the RH detail and gave them a base coat of white acrylic paint. Then I used a Posca pen and acrylic paint to add two different shades of red. I painted the eyelets and the heel detail gold. Then I sealed them with a couple of layers of matte Mod Podge. I knew before I started this doll that I wanted to recreate the iconic strawberry hat from Ocean in Space, which I will link down below. I started with Ruby's hat from her base doll and cut off the peg from the inside since Emmy's head doesn't have a hole for it. I removed the paint with acetone and carefully trimmed off the little oval ridge. Then I proceeded to forget, yet again, 
the primer exists and that I actually have some <laughs> and just went in with acrylic paint and it took me way more layers than it should have, of course. I will remember one of these days. I draw in the seeds with a yellow Posca paint pen because I want them to be yellow instead of white. I don't know why I really like strawberries with yellow seeds. I like the color combination. To make the leaves, I first rolled out some silk clay very, very thinly and let it cure. I used a template that I created to cut it out. And used a hole punch to remove the center. Which fits perfectly around the little button thing on top of the hat. I forgot to film me painting it white, but I didn't like how the edges looked. So to make them more rounded, I used some 3D fabric paint. Once dry, I painted it white again to make it all one color before painting it green. I also painted the button on top of the hat. I used some Uhu glue to glue the leaves onto the hat. and afterwards I sealed it in with a couple of coats of matte Mod Podge. Time for hair. I blended two different shades of green yarn to make these wefts. I begin gluing them on the head at the nape of the neck and work my way up and around in a circular sort of fashion, letting each row dry fully before moving on to the next. I always seem to get better results that way. I also trimmed the hair as I went to make it easier for me to style later. I also apparently didn't want to be on camera for most of this, so these are the shots that I'm able to show. The part was also being very finicky, so I did that off camera. But here's what she looks like after all of her hair is glued on. Now she just needs a little trim to clean up her style a bit. And here she is, looking a bit more sleek and presentable. So we have our doll, her shoes, and her hat. I made her these dungarees with working pockets. They took me four days to make, partially because I drafted the pattern myself and hand sewed them, and partially because my fabric was more sheer than I thought and I had to fully line them. <laughs> I'm actually super proud of how they turned out. To go with them, I made her this little yellow striped t-shirt. I used a rainbow high t-shirt as a pattern for this. And finally, I made her this tote bag out of some strawberry material, ribbon, and lace. All that's left to do is get her dressed, and she's done! Her name was Ichigo before I even started working on her. Mostly because of her casual Japanese street fashion inspiration. Ichigo being the Japanese word for strawberry. And I think she is absolutely adorable. She's so stinking cute. What do you think of Ichigo? And what's your favorite fruit? Surprise, I love strawberries. But I also really like bananas, lemons, and raspberries. If you also like raspberries, might I recommend getting some fresh ones and putting them in the freezer. They are delicious and refreshing and also make great alternatives to ice cubes, especially in something like lemonade, perhaps. 
please, please, please go and check out the other videos in this collab from Pixie Natory, Josephine's Creatures, Harley's Dollhouse, Blurred Colors Art, Dollmaker, The Dolly Geek, and I could do that DIY. Everyone made such beautiful dolls. It was a lot of fun working with everyone and seeing how everyone interpreted their fruits into doll form. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, and click the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. Links to all my socials will be in the description down below. I'm most active on Instagram. And if you really like what I do and you want to buy me a coffee, a link to my Kofi tip jar will be down there too. And until next time, bye!